In this Kotlin on Android development tutorial, we're going to be demonstrating how to, to display a web page in an activity. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, we're going to create a new application here. And it's basically we're going to be entering a URI for a web page and then displaying that web page in the activity. Okay, so we'll start a new Android Studio project. And I'll just call this something simple, Kotlin Web View. And ensure the include Kotlin support is there. We'll keep the defaults, go to next. And you know from my tutorials, I like the empty activity. And we'll just keep the main activity name. Finish that. Wait for it to build. Build is now completed. First thing I want to do here is I want to go into our layout. And we'll get our layout set up first. That's activity main. Uh, we'll remove the text view. We don't need that. That's just the hello world text view. And what I want to do here is change the constraint layout to a linear layout. And I want to make this upper linear layout, I want to make the orientation vertical. Now inside this linear layout, I want to create another linear layout that's just going to represent an edit text, a form to enter the URI and a send button. So create another linear layout. And the width will be match, match parent. And the height is just wrap content. And I'll just set the layout gravity for that. Put that in the center there. That's fine for that part. Next part is to add an edit text here, which will be our form for the URI. And the width, I'm just going to actually set that as percentage. So I'm going to set the initial value as this. Height wrap content. Right, now we're going to set the percentage here. It should be layout weight. And I'm just going to make this 70%. Okay, I want to add an ID for that. And the ID will be, I'll just call it URI text. And I do want to set a default value for that. So I'll just jump across into the strings.xml. And create a new string for my URI text. And so this will be URI, this is called text. Uh, I'll make this URI default. So be an initial value. So if you don't enter any value in your form, this will be the value that is used. And I'm just going to add my website in here. Com. Go back to our layout file here, and now we can set that text. Now I want to add the button. It's called button. And again, as with our edit text, I'm just going to set this to DP. And the height to wrap content, and we're going to make this 30%. Android layout weight, 30%. And again, I want to use an ID for that. And the ID will be just be, I'll just call it send button. And I want to set some text for that. So go back to our strings.xml, create a new, I'll call this send button. And I'm just going to call it send back to our uh, layout file. 
set the text for that and the send button. Now underneath the layout I'm just going to add a web view and I'll be match parent for both the values here and I'll set the layout gravity to center okay that should be all the changes we need to make for our layout now we'll move into the Android manifest file and make sure we've got internet permission so we'll just go users permission and I want internet now we just need to jump back to our layout file I did forget to put one thing here we do need an ID for our web view I'll just call it web view now we'll jump into the main source code and set up the code for generating our URI and then calling our web view it is here now I'm just gonna set up a method here called build URI a function and we'll set up the member name called authority which will represent the website address and that will be a string and that's going to return a URI and the first thing we want to do is to build a builder for our URI let's call it builder And then we'll just set up a number of items for our builder. So we'll set up the sch scheme first. We're just going to make this HTTPS. And now we can actually call our authority, which was our um, argument. And now we can just return that. It's called builder. build okay one thing to note if we call the build of the URI if I go and press F1 you'll see that if something goes wrong in generating our URI we'll get an unsupported operation exception so we're going to set up a throws and handle that in our code if something does go wrong so it's the equivalent to throws in Java but this is the syntax used here and Kotlin throws and now my memory has failed me again so let's click on that that's an unsupported operation exception so we'll go inside here unsupported operation exception and we'll have to select class here okay that's now set up and we'll now set up another function that will actually load the web page so we'll call it load web page and I'm just going to call our web view here and load URI I'm going to put nothing here let's keep it empty so if we want to call this another time it will just clear the previous um, web view now we can build our URI so I'll just call it value this is called URI and we'll call it the build URI and inside here if we go to our layout again we've got the edit text here that will hold our value so we'll call that URI text get the text back and we will need to set it to string And then it's just a matter of calling web view again, load URI with a URI. And we're going to have to make that two string as well. Because it is a URI that's being returned. Okay, now we want to catch the exception that was being showed up that we set for here. So I'm just going to select these two lines. It's going to select these two lines here. 
and select, what are we, try catch. And I just want to change that exception to unsupported operation exception. And inside here, I just want to print out a stack trace. Okay, that should be fine for those two functions there. And finally, it's just a matter of calling our uh, load web page, but we want to do that inside our button. So, I think it's called send button. Yes, send button. Set up an on click listener. And inside there, we just call load web page. So, let's try running this. Applications now started. You can enter your own value here. I'm not, I'm just going to send it with the default value that we've already coded into our XML. So, I'm just going to select send. Let's wait a little while. And there we have it there. Nice looking Android development website there. So what I want to do now is add some debugs here just so we can talk through the code changes we made just to reinforce what we've learnt in this Kotlin on Android development tutorial. So I'm going to put one on the um, load web page here. So it's that breakpoint. So I'll go down here and select that load web page. I'm going to put one inside our build URI and one inside the load web page. Now run it in debug mode. Application's now started. Now I need to press the stand button. We've hit the first break point. Um, that's just the on click listener for the send button. So we've verified that's working. So let's continue on. Now we're calling the load web view. We're going to clear it first in case we want to load another web page into our web view. Now we're going into our try catch harness just in case we go to uh, build our URI um, just to see if anything does go wrong there. Uh, let me continue on. There we are there. So we're inside the build URI. This is where we build it with the scheme HTTPS uh, and continue on. So we're setting the HTTPS and we're going to set the authority which is the name of the desired web page. And let me keep stepping on. We're back into that. So if we look at the URI, we can see it here. And so this is the desired URI I want to use. So that looks good. And now it's just a matter of passing that into our web view there and loading it into the web view. So we continue on there. And so we didn't get stuck into the cat, uh, the stack trace. So we're not going to print a stack trace, which is a good thing. We can just continue on and I'll just wait and the website has been loaded successfully as we saw before. This was quite a straightforward tutorial. It just demonstrated how to create a web view and we went through the Kotlin examples of setting an on-click listener and for the first time I think in Kotlin we demonstrated throwing an exception and catching that as well, doing that in the Kotlin way. One thing to note about Kotlin exceptions is they're not checked. So you have to manually do that yourself. Whereas if you were within the Java Android, you would be forced of actually ha having to implement the try-catch harnesses there. That concludes this tutorial. If you want to get notified of any of the other tutorials I'm working on, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. And thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial. Bye for now.